Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Good Monday to you. Uh, before I uh, take your questions, I just wanted to note that on behalf of all of us in the press office, uh, and from the President on down, we want to express our condolences to the NBC family and to the Palmer family at the loss of uh, John Palmer, who uh, was truly one of the greats, in my view. Uh, a wonderful man, a terrific reporter, uh, and uh, someone who is uh, as, uh, as old school as you could get and uh, just decent to the core. So uh, with that, I'll uh, go straight to the Associated Press. Thanks, Jay. Um, a couple of questions on the embassy closures and the threats surrounding that. Can you be a little more specific about the type of chatter that led to these closures? Are we talking about intercepts of electronic communications? Well, Julie, I appreciate the question, and I certainly understand the interest. There's a great deal of focus and attention on this uh, in the press, in the public, and, of course, within our administration. We take uh, the threat very seriously and have taken action uh, because of that. I'm not in a position to s discuss specific intelligence, uh, but we believe that this threat is significant and we are taking it seriously uh, for that reason uh, and have uh, taken the actions that the State Department announced uh, out of an abundance of caution uh, and will continue to monitor this uh, and take action as necessary. Is this threat contained just to Americans and American interests overseas, or is there any heightened threat to Americans in the U.S.? I would say that, uh, you know, the threat is uh, emanating from and maybe directed towards uh, the Arabian Penin uh, Peninsula, but it is beyond that, uh, potentially, and, and that is why uh, we have taken some of the actions we've taken, and we can't be more specific than that. Uh, except to say that uh, the embassy closures that we've uh, announced uh, are in uh, reaction to that out of an abundance of caution, and the extension of those closures uh, den does not reflect uh, a new stream of threat information, but uh, is more a reflection of uh, taking necessary precautions. But I just want to clarify, you said that this is largely contained to the Arabian Peninsula, but also beyond that. Does beyond that include Americans in the U.S.? I think that uh, the threat from al-Qaeda and affiliated organizations uh, to the United States and to the American people uh, has been uh, a reality that we've talked about uh, for a long time now, but I think. this specific threat that's led Again, I'm not going to get into specific uh, intelligence matters. Uh, I can tell you that you know, we have taken the action we've taken out of, an, out of, uh, out of rather, an abundance of caution, uh, and we have issued the uh, warnings that we've issued uh, in order to make sure that the American people are aware of the potential threat, the potential threat uh, that has always been with us but which is heightened at this time. And uh, we will provide more information as, uh, as we can, mindful of the need to you know, maintain our security. And then word of these embassy closures and this threat followed the president's meeting with uh, the president of Yemen. Obviously, Yemen is at the center of this. Is there anything that came from that meeting, anything President Hadi told President Obama that contributed to this decision? We read out that meeting, and I don't have any more detail for you from that meeting. Uh, it is certainly the case that we cooperate uh, on counterterrorism with Yemen uh, and have for some time. Uh, but it, this uh, specific uh, information uh, reflects uh, what we've gathered, broadly speaking, uh, uh, and uh, that's what we're reacting to. The, the meeting between President Hadi and, and President Obama uh, you know, centered on a variety of topics, including our counterterrorism cooperation. Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, Jay, should Americans in the U.S., to follow up on what Julie asked, be afraid? Jeff, what I can tell you is that uh, we face uh, an ongoing uh, threat from Al Qaeda and its affiliates. Uh, there are uh, individuals and organizations out there that uh, are focused on doing the United States and the American people harm, as well as uh, doing harm to our uh, people. Now, this, the statement that we've put out has made clear that. Our current information suggests that al-Qaeda and affiliated organizations continue to plan terrorist attacks both in the region and beyond. Um, and our information suggests that they may focus efforts to conduct attacks in the period between now uh, and the end of August. What 
you know, we know is that uh, the threat emanates from and may be uh, f focused on occurring in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Peninsula rather, but uh, it could potentially uh, be beyond that or elsewhere. And so we cannot be more specific, which is why we've taken some of the actions we've taken and made the statements that we've made. What does this say more broadly about the strength of al-Qaeda in general? We've made clear, as I was saying earlier, that as al-Qaeda core has been uh, diminished uh, through the efforts uh, of the United States and our allies, affiliate organizations, including in particular al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, have strengthened. And we have here in Washington identified AQAP as a particularly uh, dangerous threat for some time now, a number of years. I, as you know from this very podium, John Brennan, now the CIA director, then the President's counterterrorism and Homeland Security Advisor, uh, spoke very specifically about the rising threat from AQAP. And that is uh, something that we've seen in some of the uh, foiled attempts uh, that AQAP has been engaged in. And it is, uh, has uh, been a focus of attention f uh, of our uh, national security apparatus for some time. If I can ask you one other question on a separate issue. Some colleagues of ours at Reuters reported today uh, that a unit of the DEA called the Special Operations Division uh, gives tips to law enforcement across the U.S. and is asked to cover up evidence that is used to launch investigations against Americans. Um, can the White House confirm this? And is, is there, are there any concerns about the constitutionality of this program? Well, I'd say two things. One, I would refer you to the Department of Justice uh, on this. And uh, beyond that, I can tell you that uh, it's my understanding, our understanding, that uh, the Department of Justice is looking at some of the issues raised in the story. Uh, but for more, I would refer you to the Department of Justice. Yes. Uh, Jay, in the past, the President has said that uh, al-Qaeda, and you just mentioned this, uh, core has been on the, on the path to defeat. He said this uh, back in May, he said it in December. And I'm just curious, with uh, nearly two dozen embassies and consulates being closed, uh, is it fair anymore to say that uh, core al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat? Well, I think as most people who cover these issues understand it, Al-Qaeda core is the uh, Afghanistan-Pakistan-based uh, central uh, organizational core of Al-Qaeda, uh, once headed by Osama bin Laden. Uh, and there is no question over the past uh, several years, Al-Qaeda core has been uh, greatly diminished, not least because of the elimination of uh, Osama bin Laden. What is also true is that uh, Al-Qaeda and affiliated organizations represent uh, uh, a continued threat to the United States, to our allies, uh, to Americans uh, stationed abroad as well as uh, Americans here at home. And for that reason, we have focused a great deal of attention on uh, those affiliated organizations. And we have made clear over uh, the past several years that AQAP, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is of uh, particular concern and has demonstrated both an interest in and a willingness to attempt uh, serious uh, attacks on the United States, our allies, uh, and our people. Uh, for that reason, we have to be continually vigilant and have been. Uh, and uh, the threat that we've made public in recent days reflects the fact that we are vigilant about the willingness of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and other affiliated organizations with uh, al-Qaeda uh, to take action against us and against our allies and our people. Uh, and we are taking all the precautions we can as we gather more information. And what does it say to the rest of the world when you close nearly two dozen embassies and consulates? Uh, <coughs> some might say that that is a showing of, of weakness on the part of the United States, uh, that it has to shut its doors. Well, as I think the State Department has made clear, this is a temporary measure. It is uh, limited to the uh, diplomatic facilities that have been specifically identified. Uh, and it is done in terms of the extension of the closure out of, an, out of an abundance of caution, which I think is the right move, uh, given uh, the potential threat that exists. You know, we are engaged around the world, and uh, it is absolutely the case that uh, that engagement 
uh, creates some risk for American personnel uh, around the world. And, and decisions like these are designed to uh, reduce that risk uh, in the face of, of a potential threat. Uh, but the engagement, of course, will continue because it's in the United States' interest to be engaged uh, around the world, including in those areas uh, that are volatile and where the risk is higher than elsewhere. And is there any concern that you've taken your eye off of the ball when it comes to al-Qaeda, stressing for months that its core is on the path to defeat while AQAP gets stronger? When, when you have affiliates like the one in, in Benghazi or people who might be affiliated with al-Qaeda pulling off the attack in Benghazi. Uh, Lindsey Graham yesterday said that al-Qaeda is on steroids. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's on the path to defeat. Well, again, I think you're confusing al-Qaeda core with uh, what we have said very clearly about the threat uh, posed in particular by AQAP, but also affiliated organizations around the region and the world. Uh, I think that any uh, evaluation of the actions that we've taken uh, in the fight against al-Qaeda and uh, its affiliated organizations uh, over the last several years and over the life of this administration demonstrates a pretty intense uh, focus on uh, the fight against al-Qaeda and the effort to uh, degrade, degrade al-Qaeda's abilities uh, and all the, the abilities of all the affiliated organizations. The eye hasn't been taken off. I, I think, again, any fair assessment uh, would uh, conclude the opposite. John. Jay, is there any confidence that we have enough information to disrupt whatever plot uh, is potentially underway? I think we've uh, told you as much as we can at this point about the intelligence uh, that we have. Uh, I'm not in a position to discuss in any more detail our intelligence. We obviously, as I said earlier, believe that this threat is significant and it is ongoing. Uh, and for that reason, we have uh, taken some of the action that we've taken. Uh, and we are obviously continuing to gather information uh, to work with our partners and allies uh, as we do that uh, to uh, combat this threat and the overall threat posed by uh, terrorist organizations that uh, wish us harm. And on Edward Snowden, you said that uh, the administration is looking at the utility of this summit in Moscow in September. Have you had any further, uh, any further information on that? I have no uh, new announcement for you today. Uh, as I said uh, the other day, this was not a positive development. And uh, while we have a wide range of interests with the Russians, uh, we are continuing to evaluate the utility of a summit. Um, I think it's uh, fair to say that you can expect we'll have a decision to announce in coming days about that specific so issue. Did the President go to Moscow and meet with Putin just after this slap in the face? I think it's fair to say that we have a range of issues, John, uh, of interest with the Russians. And as I said the other day, uh, it has been true for four and a half years now that we have dealt with the Russians in a very uh, realistic way in an effort to cooperate where we can and to be very clear and pointed uh, where we disagree. Uh, we obviously disagree with the Russians uh, very strongly about the decision they've made on Mr. Snowden. We disagree with the Russians on a number of other issues, uh, including Syria. And uh, we've made those disagreements uh, plain, both publicly and privately, uh, in our discussions with the Russians. So when it comes to the utility of a summit in Moscow, a bilateral summit, we are evaluating that against not just our disagreement over Mr. Snowden, but some of the other issues where uh, we have failed to see thus far eye to eye. And, um, you know, once we have fully assessed the utility of a summit, we'll, we'll make an announcement. Major. A couple things, since we haven't had a chance to talk to you about this. Um, there's been a lot of speculation over the weekend that it's maybe the President's birthday, maybe it's the end of Ramadan, maybe it's the anniversary of the Kenya-Tanzania bombings. I'd like to see if you can, in any way, shape, or form, communicate something that is non-speculative about what this threat stream seems to be about and does have any connection to what has been speculated possible touch points that I just listed. Uh, I, I cannot shed light on what has generated uh, this particular threat. Uh, we simply uh, act on the information that we have. We obviously share the information we have with our partners and allies uh, as we uh, identify and try to take action against uh, those who would do us harm and pose a threat to us and who may be uh, organizing an attempt to uh, attack either the United States, our allies, or uh, a U.S. facility. Uh, but beyond that, I don't have any specific information to provide to you about uh, you know, this particular threat and, and what, it's, uh, what it's related to. Okay. 
As you told us over the weekend, the President was routinely briefed on this. In the past, when you look at case studies of times when the United States government has announced and not announced, there have been different tactical reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when there's an announcement, there's a change in the information flow, there's a change in the chatter, there's a change in the operational communication that potential terrorists go through. Can you tell us anything about if that's changed over the weekend after the announcement on Friday? The threat stream minimizing or diverting or changing in a different way? No, I, I think that's a good question, and I, I, I have no uh, new information to provide to you. I, we have no new threat stream that is related to uh, our decision to extend the closure of facilities. And, uh, you know, I can say that because understandably a, a new decision like that coming on the original decision to close some facilities uh, on Sunday. Uh, might be read as uh, indicating that we have a new uh, stream of information, and, uh, and we do not. We're simply uh, working off of the information we had coming into the weekend to uh, act prudently in, in further uh, extending the closures. Uh, Senator Graham and Senator McCain are in Egypt. I know we talked a little bit about this last week, but is there something, for example, with any conversations between the President or senior administration officials before they arrive in Egypt? Would you expect to hear back from them? And in the intervening weeks since the last spate of violence, is there anything that you were prepared to say about the direction of Egypt, either mm -hmm. pro or con, or helpful or not helpful? Well, on the visit by Senators McCain and Graham, I can say that we're continuing to consult closely uh, with Congress, and that includes uh, those uh, two senators with whom we have had, uh, at the highest levels, uh, discussions about uh, matters of national security and foreign policy. Uh, as you know, uh, those two senators met with the President not long ago uh, to discuss national security issues. And we will, of course, consult with uh, them and other members of Congress on developments in Egypt uh, in the days and weeks ahead. More broadly on Egypt, as you know, Deputy Secretary of State Bill Burns uh, was in Cairo this weekend and continued his discussions uh, with a wide range of Egyptians, uh, both uh, yesterday and today, on how uh, they can calm tensions, avoid further violence, and facilitate an inclusive democratic process that helps Egypt's uh, ongoing transition succeed. Uh, Deputy Secretary Burns has extended his trip, as has the EU Special Representative Bernardino Leon. The Deputy Secretary uh, continues to consult closely with Egyptians from a range of groups and parties and sectors of society, as well as with the EU and representatives of the UAE and Qatar, who are also in Cairo. And along with our international friends, our team is in Cairo to offer the Egyptians help as they work to calm tensions and reduce the polarization that we have seen there. Ultimately, the decisions on the path forward are for Egyptians alone to make, but we are assisting and facilitating this process as requested by the Egyptians. Before I let you go, I know you don't want to give away everything tomorrow, but there have been, for the last <coughs> month or so, some <coughs> encouraging signs in the housing market as a part of the overall upward trend of the economy. And I wonder what's missing that the President's going to address tomorrow that's needed that he hasn't already done before. Uh, well, I think that you're absolutely true that there has been an important uh, rebound in the housing market. Uh, the data that describe the situation in the housing market in this country on January uh, 20th, 2009, are daunting. Uh, the, I believe uh, the American people lost roughly $7 trillion in wealth uh, by January 2009. And what we have seen uh, through the grit and determination of the American people and through the uh, decisions made by the administration and the uh, policies put in place uh, both with Congress and through executive action has, has been um, a very positive uh, change in direction in our housing market, but we are still not where we need to be. Uh, and there is certainly ample room to grow uh, when it comes to providing more homeowners the assurance and the capability to refinance their homes uh, and to further stabilize and grow uh, the housing market across the country. So, uh, you know, as part of his plan to offer a better bargain for the middle class, uh, President Obama uh, will be in Phoenix tomorrow to lay out uh, proposals for continuing to help responsible homeowners and those Americans who seek to own their homes. Uh, following his remarks in Phoenix on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, and 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, the President will do an interview with Zillow to answer questions from citizens around the country that will be submitted through a range of social media platforms, including through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 
YouTube, and Vine. Zillow CEO Spencer Raskoff will moderate the discussion in which the President will answer questions submitted by Zillow's users and social media community uh, using the hashtag uh, uh, Ask Obama Housing. So the, um, I think what is important to remember about this is that so many Americans across the country uh, view their own economic and financial circumstances through uh, uh, their homes and whether they own a home, whether their home is underwater, whether they feel like they have uh, equity in their homes. And so the strengthening of the housing market is of vital importance to the strengthening of the middle class. And that's why the President has chosen to focus on housing as one of the cornerstones of his economic agenda. Is your refinancing and access to mortgages primarily uh, the focus? Well, yeah, I don't want to steal, as you said uh, at the top, uh, the President's thunder. So I encourage you to wait for more specifics from the President tomorrow. Ed. Jay, on Iran, you've got a new President uh, in office. And obviously, there's still a very brave nuclear threat that the administration is, is concerned about. But do you feel like he is saying some of the right things? Do you feel like maybe there is an opportunity here? Well, I appreciate the question. I want to mention that we again congratulate the Iranian people for making their voices heard during uh, Iran's election. Uh, we note that President uh, Rouhani recognized his election, uh, represented a call by the Iranian people for change, and we hope that the new Iranian government will heed the will of the voters by making choices that will lead to a better life for the Iranian people. Uh, the inauguration of the new president presents an opportunity for Iran to act quickly to resolve the international community's deep concerns over Iran's nuclear weapons program. Uh, should this new government choose to engage substantively and seriously to meet its international obligations and find a uh, peaceful solution to this issue, it will find a willing partner in the United States. Now, uh, as we've said, consistently we are open to, do, uh, to discussions with Iran, both through the P5 plus one and through bilateral talks. The focus of those uh, talks would be and needs to be on uh, Iran's willingness to uh, forsake its nuclear weapons ambitions. And should uh, it be willing to do that in a verifiable way, uh, there's an opportunity for Iran to uh, re-enter the international community, to uh, ease the burden of its isolation, and thereby to do what uh, the new leadership in Iran has identified as its goal, which is to uh, improve the lot of the Iranian people. And that would be both uh, very good news for the Iranian people as well as for the region and the world. And finally, on Al Qaeda, I wanted to go back to what Jim was asking you about the President's previous comments. You're correct that you and other officials have said that there's a difference between Al Qaeda core and its affiliates and, and the threat from each, but on the campaign trail, the President rarely made that distinction. October 11th, 2012, quote, I said we'd refocus on the people who actually attacked us on 9-11, and today Al-Qaeda is on the run and Osama bin Laden is dead. Did he give the full picture to the American people on the campaign about the threat from Al-Qaeda when that was his talking point again and again? Uh, I think it's uh, indisputable that the elimination of Osama bin Laden was uh, a major accomplishment in the effort against al-Qaeda. We have been clear, and the President has been clear, that the threat from al-Qaeda very much remains. And I think in answer to Jim's question, I uh, was trying to convey that any fair assessment of the actions this administration takes and this government takes and our uh, extraordinarily capable men and women in uniform and men and women in the intelligence community the actions they take in order to continue the fight against al-Qaeda and al-Qaeda's affiliates demonstrates how seriously we continue to take the threat. And nobody should be under any illusion that that threat still exists. I think that we have uh, numerous conversations in this room and around Washington and around the country about uh, what we <coughs> need to do continually as a nation to protect ourselves against the threat posed by uh, terrorists who want to do us harm. And the fact that we continue to do those things demonstrates that the threat is real uh, and uh, we have to be ever vigilant. So uh, I, again, as I said earlier, I don't think there's any fair reading of uh, the efforts we've made in the fight against uh, AQAP and other Al-Qaeda affiliates uh, uh, 
But he rarely had those caveats that you're adding. Yeah, I think that's. He said I, I on think, the run. He said they've been decimated. There's but no question. He didn't that say their affiliates might get us. Well, that's just not true. But Al Qaeda's uh, core leadership, the leadership that attacked the United States on September 11th, 2001, has been decimated. Uh, Al Qaeda core in the AFPAC region uh, has been greatly diminished and is on the run. And we have brought uh, continual pressure to bear on both Al Qaeda core and Al Qaeda's affiliates. And we have, for a number of years now, made clear that our attention in terms of the threat uh, presented by Al Qaeda has uh, shifted in focus to some of these affiliates, in particular AQAP. And John Brennan and others have been categorical about that in public. Uh, so I think that uh, represents the full picture. James, I want to yeah. follow up on that from the other side. There have actually been numerous drone strikes that have taken place in Yemen, some of which you guys have confirmed, some of which you haven't. Understandable on that front. But it have been talked about of taking out leaders of AQAP. And I guess my question is more about <laughs> Is the drone strikes not working? Uh, AQAP, we've supposedly gone after their leadership, had success in getting. Is this, yeah, as you get rid of one leader, two more come up? Uh, is there an explanation of why? Why is AQAP apparently as operational as they are today with all the effort that you guys have talked about in public? Like I said, some of it has been that way. Some of it has been reported uh, uh, behind the scenes. Why is this not working? Well, I don't think that the fact that there is a continual threat uh, from the most operational of the AQ affiliates uh, suggests that we haven't uh, brought enormous uh, focus to the uh, effort to degrade uh, those affiliates. Uh, we have, and we have worked with Yemen uh, and other partners when it comes to AQAP. We have worked uh, with other international partners around the world. Uh, in our efforts to degrade Al Qaeda and its affiliates, uh, affiliates in different parts of the region and the world, and we'll continue to do that. But uh, as we do that, we have to recognize that, you know, we're talking about an organization and individuals who are singularly focused on um, doing harm to our interests and our people, uh, and we have to therefore be mindful of that threat and take action accordingly. Do you uh, concur with uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, a member of the Intelligence Committee, said this morning that he thinks the drone strikes, particularly in Yemen, have been a double-edged sword, that for every success you had, it's served as a recruiting, co recruiting tool for AQED? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about specific uh, means by which we uh, take the fight to Al Qaeda or its affiliates. I will simply say that uh, it is our view that we have to continue to take the fight uh, to those institutions, those organizations, and those individuals that are actively plotting to uh, attack the United States, attack American citizens, attack uh, Americans stationed abroad, uh, attack our allies and their people, uh, for as long as that threat exists. And uh, that effort extends beyond uh, the kinetic actions that can be taken. It, it, it includes uh, all of the work we do with our uh, partners in the region and around the world. Uh, through intelligence uh, and other means uh, to ensure that we are doing everything we can uh, to enhance the security of the American people uh, and our uh, men and women stationed uh, around the world. On the worldwide travel alert, is this an indication that any American tourist, any American businessman traveling overseas is potentially a target, or is this worldwide travel alert just an overabundance of caution? Yeah, I think in this situation, uh, it was the judgment made uh, by the administration that uh, providing the alert uh, was uh, the right course of action, understanding that it was fairly general. Uh, you know, we are uh, taking actions when it comes to the traveling uh, public uh, through TSA and, and other organizations to uh, ensure the security of the traveling public and uh, enhance that security. Uh, but as we said earlier, we can't be specific about, or I said earlier and others have said earlier, we can't be uh, specific about, uh, you know, where it is less safe and where it is more safe, so we need to make sure that everyone is aware that there is an existing threat. Two other quick things. Why um, is McC are McCain and Lindsey Graham acting on behalf of the White House in this, in this instance? I know there's been, you, you said that they've been fully briefed. Mm -hmm. 
their role as mediator in this situation? Are they there basically on behalf of the administration? Well, I don't know that they're there as mediators. I think they're there representing uh, the United States Congress, the United States Senate. They're two uh, leaders uh, in the Senate on matters of foreign policy for the Republican Party in particular. But uh, they have certainly been in conversation with the President and others on the President's national security team. Uh, and uh, I think their efforts in Egypt and the conversations they have represent uh, the broad interest that not just the administration has, but that the Congress has in what's happening there. And will work. Direct. I mean, they are, re they are caring as far as General Sisi is concerned, the Muslim Brotherhood. They're representing the interests I, of President Obama. Deputy Secretary Burns is representing the administration in Cairo, uh, as I speak, and has been for several days and has on his prior visits there. Uh, Senators Graham and McCain are representing uh, themselves, obviously, the U.S. Senate, the U.S. Congress. Uh, but we are all uh, focused together on the very volatile situation in Egypt. And there is no question that we consult regularly with members of Congress, especially those members like Senators Graham and McCain, who have uh, a particularly keen interest in the country and the region. The G20 at all? Uh, on, off, uh, in, in jeopardy? I mean, is there, is, there, is there a way you said that you don't? I don't foresee a change in the president's the president, schedule. Adding the U.S. prestige by going to uh, St. Petersburg? I don't see a, uh, a change. There is not a change to announce in the president's schedule. The G20 is an international uh, meeting. Uh, one that the United States was very instrumental in setting up as an annual meeting of uh, 20 nations uh, to discuss international economic policy and other policies. Uh, so uh, the President's schedule uh, remains as it was, uh, which includes attending uh, that summit. Could he end up not attending but the U.S. attends? Well, again, I, I don't foresee a change in uh, his participation, uh, and I don't have any further scheduling announcements. Margaret. Thanks, Jack. Um, the embassy closings come as there is this debate over the NSA's surveillance programs, and I'm wondering whether um, the intelligence and the ongoing threat that the U.S. has identified helps bolster the case for the NSA's activities and programs. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to blend those two stories or those two issues together. We have a threat that we have advised the public about and uh, discussed with you in the media, and we are acting in reaction to that threat, uh, and we have a separate, you know, we have a set of issues uh, regarding uh, the unauthorized disclosure of some classified information uh, that has led to uh, a debate about um, the programs we have in place to protect our security uh, and the balance that we seek and the president seeks in uh, both protecting our security and in maintaining uh, the privacy of the American people. So. Uh, we're focused when it comes to the threat on, uh, you know, what that threat rep represents, how we can uh, act against it, and uh, ensure the security and protection of the American people and of our facilities uh, abroad. Uh, I, I wouldn't blend the two issues. May I ask you? Um, I don't mean this facetiously. Mm -hmm. It's a real question. Operationally, what difference does it make what, if the AQ core is weakened while the AQ branches are strengthened? Does it make it easier or harder, or is it a wash in terms of Al Qaeda's ability to organize some sort of worldwide thing if there are a bunch of branches without a core? Well, I think that some uh, counterterrorism experts might uh, be able to uh, address this with greater detail. Uh, Al Qaeda core. Al Qaeda Corps, uh, headed by Osama bin Laden uh, and uh, uh, Zawahiri and others, you know, took dramatic action on several instances to uh, inflict damage and take the lives on the uh, American people and take the lives of Americans. Uh, and therefore, the actions we took against, as a nation, Al Qaeda Corps were uh, both the right thing to do and uh, necessary when it came to mitigating uh, the threat that Al Qaeda core represented and con represents it is diminished but not defeated uh, but there's no question that as we've said for a long time now the uh, some of these affiliate organizations and in and in particular AQAP represent threats as well and we have seen in the past from AQAP at, uh, attempts that have been thwarted but were serious attempts to you know, uh, inflict damage on the American people and uh, engage in spectacular attacks against uh, U.S. Uh, interests and, and people. 
and, and we have to be mindful of that, and that's why we are uh, responding to this current threat in the way that we are. I'm going to only be able to take a couple of more. Uh, Ari? Um, the President is speaking at Camp Pendleton and then also to disabled American veterans. Is the focus going to be um, middle class jobs and opportunities uh, sort of in civilian life, or is it going to be foreign policy speech? Is it going to focus on wars ending? Can you just give us a framework to think about these two events? Well, I don't want to steal his thunder for those events either. I think uh, when it comes to visiting Camp Pendleton, the President uh, very much looks forward to, as he always does, visiting with our troops. Uh, both when they're stationed here in the United States and when they're stationed abroad. And I think uh, you can expect those remarks to be focused on the troops themselves. Um, and then, obviously, there are a host of issues that uh, this President believes uh, merit uh, the attention of the American people uh, and of Washington when it comes to our veterans, and in particular our disabled veterans. So uh, he, he looks forward to that event as well. So this is not branded as part of the middle class jobs economic This is not. No, neither of those events are, are uh, one of the cornerstones that we talked about when it came to uh, this series of speeches building on the original speech in Galesburg. Jackie? Um, Jay, from the start, the President has tried to get away from the uh, talking about a global war on terror, as the previous administration did. And yet, if the war on Al Qaeda, as he's preferred to style it, is um, in effect a war against these affiliates as well, wherever they show up, isn't that, in effect, a global war on terror? Well, setting aside the nomenclature, I think that the fact is we have a continuing threat from Al Qaeda, uh, and in particular some of its affiliate organizations that have sprung up uh, in the last decade. And, uh, you know, we respond to those threats because they represent um, a real security challenge for the United States, for our allies, and for our people. But what the President has been focused on from the beginning when he came in uh, was making sure that we were using our resources to counter the threat against the United States. Uh, that's why he uh, refocused our attention on Al Qaeda in the AFPAC region uh, and on the effort in Afghanistan, because that war was launched uh, justifiably in response to the attacks on the United States on uh, September 11, 2001. Uh, he ended the war in Iraq, uh, as he promised he would do. And one of the reasons that that was necessary was to ensure that we could continue to focus, as we should, on the threat posed to the United States and uh, by Al Qaeda and by its affiliates. Uh, you know, it is obviously a well known uh, fact that the President believed, as a candidate in 2008, uh, that through the previous years we had as a nation and as an, uh, in our efforts uh, lost our focus on the specific threat against the United States uh, and that the effort in Iraq had contributed to that. Uh, so the President made sure that we would focus again on Al-Qaeda uh, Al uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan as well as Al-Qaeda's uh, affiliates around the world. Okay. Last one, Cheryl. Uh, thanks, Jay. On a question about health care. Um, couple months until the exchanges and marketplaces have to go into effect. Is the President personally meeting with Secretary Sebelius and other Cabinet Secretaries about implementing health care at this point? Well, the implementation of the Affordable Care Act is very much a, a high priority of the President's, and he is engaged uh, uh, in discussions about uh, progress being made uh, on implementation, as you would expect, uh, and certainly the uh, rest of uh, the administration is. I don't have specific meetings to read out to you, but uh, this is uh, an important priority. We need to ensure that uh, implementation continues. Uh, as I've said all along from the podium, uh, as others have engaged in repeated uh, attempts, futile attempts to repeal the Affordable Care Act, I think the, the House has just had its 40th vote uh, uh, along those lines. Uh, the administration is focused on implementing a law that was passed by Congress, signed into law by the President, and upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States a law that is already, already providing benefits to millions of Americans, uh, to young people on their parents' insurance policies, to uh, seniors benefiting from discounted prescription drugs, uh, to everyone who will benefit from the inability of insurance companies to deny coverage to those with pre-existing conditions. Uh, and, you know, we'll go about the business of implementing the law uh, so that those benefits are more widely shared by the American people. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
it would be wonderful if Congress would focus on assisting in that implementation uh, because everyone's constituents, no matter uh, what state you're from or what district you represent, stands to benefit from uh, the greater access to insurance that the Affordable Care Act provides, the benefits that the Affordable Care Act, when uh, it's implemented fully, uh, will provide uh, uh, to Americans across the country. And, you know, when a, when a citizen of District Y in State X uh, wants to know how he or she can benefit from the Affordable Care Act, I would hope that members of Congress and their staff in those districts would provide the information to the uh, to their constituents that uh, their constituents deserve by law. Thank you very much. Any comment on the baseball suspensions? Just in terms uh, no, of... I don't have any. Jay, happy birthday to the President and my best wishes. I will tell him. <laughs>